a Volvo Mini Excavator, EC18E. It will play the leading role in my next project, which I was forced to initiate by the authorities. It wasn't something I had planned at all, but I was compelled to do it. When I bought this property about five years ago, it didn't take long before I was contacted by the authorities about the old sewage system, which had been in place for over 30 years. I knew it wasn't in the best condition, but I wasn't expecting them to reach out just a month after the purchase, telling me I needed to replace it with something more modern. They did give me two years to start the work and five years to complete it, but it still felt like it came out of nowhere. I had other projects planned that I wanted to focus on first. But now, it was what it was, and there was no turning back. I had to get started. I drove four trailer loads of sand and gravel. Each trip was about 50 miles long. I hand shoveled everything onto a tarp to avoid damaging the lawn. I rented a mini excavator to dig out for the infiltration, bought a water filter for $3,000 and water pipes. I started by marking out where we would dig for the infiltration. The pit was supposed to be about 10 feet long, 3.3 feet wide and 2 feet deep. Being frugal as usual, I only rented the excavator for one day, so it was a rush to get everything done on time. I was incredibly frustrated throughout the entire work. The task of replacing the logs and then the roof on the house almost broke me over the summer. And now, I was stepping once again into completely uncharted territory. What am I doing? I asked myself several times. Anyone who works with groundwork and sewage is probably laughing at me as I stumble through this video. Most people would have hired a contractor to do this, or at least gotten help from others. But I'm not good at asking for help. I don't want to bother people. Finally, something I'm good at. Moving sand with a wheelbarrow felt like a task I couldn't fail at. But there was a lot of sand to move. It needed to be a layer of about 20 inches of sand in the pit. I started to feel worn out. But when it felt like the worst and my body was tired, I kept going, driven by sheer will. I wasn't going to give up. I worked late into the evening, and when I finally stumbled and almost flew over the wheelbarrow, that's when I realized it was time to call it a day and continue tomorrow. A new day. The infiltration bed is done topped with a layer of stone. As you can see, I have a measuring stick placed in the middle to keep track of the depth. Now, it's just a matter of placing the artificial infiltration plates and the pipe that needs to be attached to the water filter. 
It's important that everything slopes in the right direction so the water doesn't flow back into the filter. The only thing left to do now is to fill in and tidy up after all the digging. A layer of soil will also be placed over the infiltration bed and then we'll sow grass there to make it look nice. The water filter needs to be filled with special peat which will need to be replaced periodically. In addition to this water filter work, we also had to install a combustion toilet. We chose one from the brand Cinderella, quite expensive cost around $2,000, but hopefully it holds good quality. The whole deal with the water filter, pipes, renting the excavator, sand, gravel and combustion toilet came to about $6,000. A frustrating expense, but I don't even want to think about what it would have cost if I had hired someone to do the whole thing, probably double or more. The authorities have approved my installation and I will start it up in the summer. Hope you're doing well. Feel free to follow my journey. Best wishes, Chris.